let's take a step back and talk a little bit more about working with Blender's UI because it is a bit different than other programs. But once you get used to it, you'll find it to be really flexible. We've already looked at the 3D view, the outliner and the properties editor, but I think we should take a closer look at how they all work and how they all work together. First, when it comes to the 3D view, we already talked about the toolbar here in the left. And if we hover our mouse over the right side of the toolbar and left click and drag, and we have to get it pretty much on the dot there. If we left click and drag, we can pull this outwards. If we pull it out once, then we can get a two column layout. And if we pull this out a little bit more, then we get all the names of everything. But we didn't show that if we hover over that same area until we get those double arrows, left click and drag to the side of the editor, then we can hide it completely. The only real way to know that this is hidden is that we have this tiny little arrow that we can click to pop it right out. Since this is so common though, and since it's kind of hard to actually see that tiny little arrow, then instead of clicking the little arrow like we can do there, we can also use the hotkey T to show or hide the toolbar. So if I hit T, it'll toggle it off. And if I hit T again, it'll toggle it back on. We can also go to view and just uncheck the toolbar. If we go back to that view menu, then you can see we have a couple other things as well. Underneath the toolbar is the sidebar and the hotkey for that is N. So let's check that on and you can see we now have a little flyout on the right side of our screen and this is home to a bunch of quick settings and properties. Under the item tab, we have the transform panel, which just gives us the same transform panel that's over in our properties editor. But that's just a very quick way to get to it. If we're in a different tab in the properties editor, we can still change the location here if we need to. Or see what the scale is or things like that. Here's where we can also see the absolute dimensions of our object, which for whatever reason we can't see anywhere else in Blender. But that's a helpful thing to know. Also in the sidebar is another area for our tool settings. So we already talked about how if we go to our toolbar here and let's just go into edit mode so we can choose a tool that has a few more settings. Let's go to, let's say, inset faces. We know we have the settings for that tool up at the top underneath the header, but we can also go to the tool tab of the sidebar and see those exact same settings here. This can be helpful because some tools have a ton of settings and so seeing it in a vertical layout makes much more sense. So sometimes you won't find the tools here up at the top. And if that's the case, then you can just go to view and just check whether tool settings is on or off. If you can't find it, just like so, then you can either use the sidebar and go down to the tool tab, or you can go to view and turn tool settings back on. Or as we talked about before, we can also go to our properties editor and see the tool settings there at the top with the icon that's the wrench and the screwdriver. Most of the time I don't need the sidebar though, so I'll go ahead and turn that off by going to view and sidebar, or we could use the hotkey N. I used to call this actually the N panel in previous versions of Blender because it didn't really have a name, uh, but it just popped up with the hotkey N, but the official name of it is actually the sidebar. But you can also call it N panel and people will know exactly what you're talking about. But maybe with the sidebar and the toolbar open, things might be getting a little bit cramped. So let's say you want to maximize the 3D viewport and not see the outliner or the properties editor or the timeline. Well, to do that, you can just go to view, down to area, and choose toggle maximize area, or use the hotkey control spacebar. Once you click that, then it'll take over all of the other editors and you can work in full screen here. To get back, you can either hit control space and just use that hotkey to toggle between, or you can use the button at the top that says back to previous. Sometimes it's easy to forget that you're in this mode, but that little button makes it a little bit more clear. So you could also click that and you'll be jumped back right into your regular workspace. This control space hotkey works in any editor. So we could also do this on the timeline or in the outliner, but most of the time it's just useful in the 3D view. Now let's talk about how we can resize our editors. For that, all we need to do is just hover over any editor border until we get those double arrows and then left click and drag. So in this case, maybe I want to give my outliner a little bit more room. I'll left click and drag and drag downwards and that will shrink the property editor and grow the outliner. Let's go ahead and do that again. I'll hover over until I get those double arrows, left click and drag up and that'll resize it. Most things in Blender are pretty responsive, so you can work with whatever size you need to. For one example, it's pretty common for me to want to have a little bit more space in my timeline if I'm working on animation, so I might left click and drag upwards to give it more space. Or if I'm not working on animation, maybe I'll left click and drag and drag it all the way down. But usually I'll leave it at its default. Another thing that we can do is split and join editors. So let's say we wanted two different 3D views. Well, we could do that by going over to one of the borders of the 3D view until we get those double arrows again. And this time I'll right click until we get a menu and let's make a vertical split. Now you'll see our mouse has changed. And if I just drag this little split line all the way over to the middle of the 3D view, I can left click and now we have two 3D views. So maybe I want one to be in front view here and the other one in side view, and then I can work in both. 
Now it's gonna be a little bit crowded in this one, so maybe I'll want to hide my sidebar and hide my toolbar in that one, but keep it over in this one. Each 3D view can have its own properties. So for example, you might want to turn on wireframe view in one, but leave it in solid view for the other, or any other arrangement. Just be aware that your tool settings though will be the same between them. Let's go ahead and practice splitting an editor one more time. This time I'll hover over the bottom border of the left 3D view, right click, and this time I'll choose a horizontal split and split this one right in half. Now we have three 3D views. Does that make it 9D? I don't really know. But now let's go ahead and actually combine these editors back together. For that, we can just, again, hover over the border, right click, and this time I'll click Join Areas. That'll turn my mouse into a little arrow, and whichever editor I hover over will be the one that gets closed, and the one that's highlighted a little bit lighter will be the one that stays. So in this case, if I want to close the bottom one, I'll hover over it, and then just left click. And then if I want to collapse these two editors into one, I'll just hover over the border, again, right click, Join Areas, hover over the left one, and left click. So that's pretty easy to work with, but there's also one other way of doing it that is a little bit less precise, but also a little bit faster, so it's just up to personal preference. You can also go to any corner of an editor where it has a rounded corner until your mouse just turns into a little crosshair, and then if you left click and drag in any direction, it'll split into a new editor. So if I left click and drag sideways here, it'll create a vertical split, and if I left click and drag from the corner upwards, it'll create a horizontal split. And then to combine these editors back together, I can just hover over that exact same area, and this time I'll left click and drag downwards into the other editor to combine it. I'll do that same thing here. I'll hover over the bottom right corner of the editor, but it could be any corner. It could be the top right corner. And then just left click, drag over into the other editor, and release. I'm more used to doing it this way because they didn't used to actually have that right click context menu, but I wouldn't actually recommend doing it this way if you're a beginner because it can be easy to miss. So for example, if you're just a couple pixels off and let's say you accidentally dragged into the timeline instead, then you might instead of splitting the 3D view, just give yourself a giant timeline and that's not too helpful. Control Z here won't actually undo your editor changes. So let's get our 3D view back. I'll go ahead and go to the border of the timeline, right click and choose horizontal split. And then I'll place a split right back where it was before. But now we just have two timelines instead of a 3D view and a timeline. What we need to do now is switch this editor from the timeline into a 3D view. So to do that, we can go to the header all the way to the left where we have this drop down, and here's where we can change the editor type. We can change it to anything, including an image editor, but for now, let's just go back to our 3D view. That's just the first one on the left, left click, and now we're back. Because this is so customizable, you'll see people using lots of different layouts online, but you can just stick with whatever's most comfortable and convenient for you. But now that we've talked about how we can work with our editors, let's talk about workspaces, which are these tabs here at the top of Blender. So far, we've only been working in the layout workspace, but let's go ahead and switch over to our modeling workspace. All of Blender's features are available in all of your workspaces. All a workspace is is just an arrangement of your editors to make things more convenient, and it can also jump you into a different mode. So when I was in the layout workspace, I was in object mode, but if I switch over to the modeling workspace, then any object that I have selected will automatically be jumped into edit mode. So that's just something to be aware of. If you wanted to, you could use the layout workspace for everything, but sometimes it's helpful to have a dedicated layout for specific tasks. If you want, you can go through and explore these other workspaces as well. We can switch over to the sculpting workspace, and now you can see it's jumped us right into sculpt mode, it's turned off our overlays, and if we left click and drag on the mesh, we can immediately start sculpting on it. Though of course we won't see a huge difference here, just because of course we're working on the default cube and there's not a lot of vertices to push around. But even if you don't know how to work with sculpting or UV editing or any of these other ones yet, I'd still recommend just checking out the workspace and seeing what it looks like. Now let's head back to our layout workspace. Let's say for example that you make some changes here. Let's make our timeline a little bit smaller. And maybe we want our outliner all the way on the left side of the screen here. Well, what I could do is I'll drag up my properties editor, or actually let's just do the more reliable right click method of hovering over the border, right click, join areas, and then hover my mouse over the outliner. And it looks like if we hover our mouse over the left side of the screen, we can't actually get those double arrows. So in this case, we might actually want to split this out using the corner drag method. So I'll left click and drag the corner over to the right and switch this from the 3D view to the outliner. Now, if we have a ton of objects, it'll make it a little bit easier to see. And I might want this to continue down all the way to the bottom of our screen. So I'm gonna take this bottom right corner of our outliner, left click and just drag into the timeline here to make it extend into that area. Okay, let's just say that this is how you wanted to work. Well, the problem with this is that if we go to File and New and General, 
it's going to reset all of our editors to the default. What you need to do instead is go to File, down to Defaults, and click on Save Startup File. Once you do that, then anything that you have in your scene, as well as your editor layouts, will be what you see when you open up Blender next time. Now, I'm not going to do that here because I've changed the default scene, but if you really want to make a change, then you'll probably want to go to File and New and General, make whatever change that you want, then go to File, Defaults, and Save Startup File. Now, if I go to File and New and General, then that change has been saved. But I want to not do that, so I'll go put that back. File, Defaults, Save Startup File, and there we go. If at any point you got way off track or something got messed up and you want to just go back to the way Blender was at its start, you can always go to File, Defaults, and Load Factory Settings. I'm not going to do that here because it's going to change my font size to be super tiny, but you get the idea. Working with editors like this might be a little bit more familiar for people coming from a coding background because that's how some text editors kind of work, but things like Photoshop and Illustrator tend to work a little bit differently than this. But once you get used to this kind of workflow, it becomes really fast and flexible. So I'd recommend practicing splitting and joining editors, as well as swapping between different workspaces. Once you're feeling pretty comfortable with the UI as a whole, then head over to the next lesson.